I miss Wes Craven. Really enjoy him as an I enjoyed him as a director. Shocker is my personal favorite. I did a review of Shocker long ago and a fan commentary. I believe with my my friend Efri saying why we love Shocker so much. Personal favorite of mine, my favorite West Craven flick. I love A Nightmare on Elm Street, West Craven's New Nightmare. Love Serpent and the Rainbow and the People Under the Stairs. I believe I did reviews for all of those. Stream I like. Now, his films in the 70s, I was never big on, to be honest. The Last House on the Left, I actually prefer the remake. Just I thought the remake had a more consistent tone. The Last House on the Left, the original, had some nice songs. You know, the road leads to nowhere. But just, it went from trying to be intense to trying to be very slapsticky, cartoonish. Even the music, it just... It didn't work for me. And then the original Tales of Eyes, I much prefer the remake by Alexander Aja. I know I'm alone in that, or some of my friends agree, but I just thought the the remake of Hills of Eyes, I like that the third act becomes almost a almost an Enyermo Kone, very bloody, revenge, western action movie almost, where the guy who kind of looked like me dud just ticked ass took names it was so rousing and i just prefer that much more than the original the original hills of eyes i've never cared for that's why i never really reviewed it i didn't review when west train passed away because i didn't want to be oh uh, i just felt wrong because you know the guy just passed away and i i love west Craven. loved when he did interviews and commentaries really seemed like a nice guy and uh, but the original Hills of Eyes, I've just never much a fan of, but it is definitely a hell lot better than the Hills of Eyes 2. This is a DVD I got long ago from my friend Michael CP, which I know he wasn't a fan. This has a Blu-ray with features. I would be honest, I'd be curious to look at the features because even though I hate the movie, I think Arrow Video did or something. I, I don't remember, but. When it's a bad movie, I'm so curious about the making of the film, if that makes sense. I'd be curious to hear about the making of it, and plus I don't like the film, I'm fine if they trash it or not. So, you know, maybe one day I'll pick up the Blu-ray just for curiosity on the features, but not anytime soon, because this movie is a piece of shit. This movie's got awful in every way. Dodd flashback, that's really all you have to say dog flashback a dog has a fucking flashback now Wes Craven at the time last house and left Hills of Ice did well but after that projects could not come to four Swamp Thing did not do that well he had written the script in Emmer on Elm Street. No one wanted to buy it. He was turned down by pretty much every studio, including Paramount. Bob Shea said, we'll do it, but they didn't have the money for it. So, Wes Craven was very poor. Didn't have any jobs. So, he got talked into doing a sequel to The Hills of Eyes. Even though he did not want to do it, he didn't know what to do. He had nothing to, more to say. And you could tell he did not care. I mean, I don't blame him, but he he did not care because this movie doesn't care. A good chunks of the movie is flashbacks to the first film. The, the story is so f stupid. I mean, a bunch of teen characters going out into the same desert because they have this super fuel for their bikes. Yeah, super fuel. <laughs> You have a blind, our lead is this blind girl who sometimes is psychic and sometimes isn't. She's only psychic when the plot fucking serves it. I'm like, then why the fuck is she psychic in the first place? She doesn't really help matters because everyone almost, pretty much everyone dies except her and her boyfriend, Kevin Spurtis, who was in, who would later be in Fire 30 Part 7, The New Blood. I know I gave it away, but it's Hills of Ice Part 2. The two of them and the Dodd Beast, who I guess is from the first movie, but they even say in dialogue that was like eight years ago. 
or how many years did they say? I forget what year they said. For some reason, I thought they said eight years, but I could be wrong. But I'm like, this dog must be pretty fucking old. <laughs> but it, this dog moves like a track star. And it has a fucking flashback to when it attacked Michael Behrman in the first movie and killed him. Ripped out his net, but somehow Michael Behrman is alive in this. And there's no reason why Michael Behrman is in this other than promotion because Michael Behrman does nothing. I don't even know if Michael Behrman kills anybody. He just gets his ass kicked. Like, he gets his ass... Okay, before I go ahead, the story. The movie begins... I guess trying to be Texas Chainsaw Massacre because he had this title crawl. The following film is based on fat. Oh, really? Bullshit. And then the, the crawl is talking about the first film. The guy from the first film who played Bobby, he's talking to a psychiatrist and he did a flashback. And I thought the guy who played Bobby did, you know, from the first film, he did a good job. But it's like the movie said, yeah. Fuck that, we can't have that in this movie. So, the movie knew he was doing too good of a job, so he, he's of course freaked out about this because he helped create this super fuel. <laughs> and also, the woman who's part of the family in the first movie, Ruby, which I think sometimes they call her Rachel, but I'll call her Ruby. She's also with Bobby. The... At first, they're both going to take all these teen characters out into the desert. But Bobby is the smartest person in fucking horror film history. <laughs> because he says, I'm not going. I'm staying behind. So yeah, makes me like the character even more. Like He has a couple scenes in the beginning. He's, again, pretty good with what little he had. I don't, that's what I mean. That's why I like. I don't know if they touch on that on the Blu-ray features. Like, why did they have his character stay behind? Did he not want to be in the film that much? Was it like, okay, I'll be in the opening? What, why is that the case? Or you think maybe he'll go out there later, maybe kick some ass and face his demons and overcome his fears. But no, that's not the case either. He just stays behind and, of course, because of that, he's alive. So, again, Bobby, from the first movie, in this film, he's one of the smartest characters in horror film history. <laughs> and this, you know, biker motorcycle team. You have this stupid early scene where a guy has a mask on, gets a ladder, goes upstairs, upstairs to steer his blind girlfriend blind with a fucking mask on but it's like they had to add in line well you know since you always feel my face first you two literally walk in and just do noises are you there hello hello not saying anything like, no you, he has the mask on to supposedly Trip the audience in the thing just something bad's gonna happen, but you know something nothing's bad gonna happen because it's the Hills of Ice and the Hills of Ice people don't wear fucking masks and don't try to kill people in suburbia. So this whole thing was fucking stupid. Uh, one of the characters would actually be the mayor in Robocop 2. Which it was it was fun to see him in an early role. I forget the actor's name. I don't know if they say it back here. Yeah, I think it's Willard Pugh. Yeah, Kevin Blair, who's also, whose name is Kevin Spurtis, he was in Fire the 13 Part 7 af later after this. But it was cool to see the, the guy would be the mayor in Robocop 2. I'm like, oh, okay. And yeah, I, I guess... Some people say this film is 84. Some people say 85. I'm just going to say 84 for the sake of argument. But it was made before, but it came out after Nightmare on Elm Street. Because, oh, Nightmare on Elm Street is a hit. I'll release this piece of shit. And I don't know if this is true, but maybe they... From what I rem remember hearing, they ran out of money. And then maybe that's why there's so many motherfucking flashbacks. 
And that's what I mean. If you have that Blu-ray, folks, do they explain why the fuck there's a Dodd flashback? Do they, do they explain that? And why the fuck is there a sighted lady, a sighted blind lady, that her sighted beams only work on marginal bits of the time? Then why the fuck do you do it in the first place? Why don't you have your sighted beams go to Bobby and then at the end he comes in guns a blazing and kills the, the mutants and goes out a blazing and tits some ass, sir? Or why the fuck are you testing this rocket fuel? I'm asking like Ruby, the character. You know this desert is where, you know, people died years ago. There's many places in the fucking country that test rocket fuel. I'm sure there is. R was where an am. I'm sure there's plenty of fucking places to do it. You don't have to go into the same fucking desert. The same fucking area. Go into a fucking parking lot if you have to. Close down a fucking street. Go to a fucking empty runway or an empty drive-in movie theater or an empty whatever. I'm sure there's many other places to test this fucking thing out. And Ruby, why aren't you fighting more? Like, you know what happened years before. You just half-heartedly complain and... They picked up the dog beast... And like Ruby is sleeping on the bus with the kids on and she has a fucking flashback. They get to this place because their bus has fucked up and they're running out of gas. And then the dog has a fucking flashback. Michael Berryman, he gets his ass hit by Ruby. He gets his ass hit by Kevin Blair, Kevin spurred us. And Kevin even takes his fucking knife. Uh, he... He doesn't kill anybody, and he fucking gets killed by the dog again. So it's like this character is so useless, and it's an insult to Michael Berryman. He's just a pussy, not the actor, but the ter this character is such a pussy in this movie. He doesn't kill anybody. He doesn't do anything. He just gets his ass hit, then he dies. I should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video. If you have this film. Pause it at 1 hour, 11 minutes, and 46 seconds. Because this tells all about how much Wes Craven didn't give a fuck. It's when the dog is going to push Michael Behrman off the cliff. If you pause at 1 hour, 11 minutes, 46 seconds. I'm watching this and I'm going, who the fuck is that? Because I didn't think it was the dog pushed him off. I thought it was another character. I rewound it and I paused it. It's a fucking crew member with a yellow, like, yellow here, stocking hat. Who I guess had the dog and made the dog push it. You just see him play his day in the top left corner of the screen. Don't blame me. Watch the scene where the dog pushes Michael Berryman. Look at the top left. You'll clearly see, like, why the fuck is the crew member in the shot? Why is he in bright fucking yellow hat? Why did no one edit it out? Why didn't you have another take? This is Wes fucking Craven. He knew what he was doing even at this point. So it just goes to show you once again, this is, Wes Craven did not give a fuck about making this movie. Other than money. And he's admitted it. My god man though. It is. That is one of the worst fucking flubs I've seen. A lot in this. Or 80's horror marathon. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. And just stupid shit like. Michael Berryman steals their motorcycle. Why the fuck. A. How the fuck does he know how to ride a motorcycle. I didn't know mutants in the desert in their spare time ride fucking motorcycles. And then later on, the big motherfucker, fat ass Reaper, he's on a motorcycle. So you have like a seven foot guy on a little fucking motorcycle. Might as be a clown. But yeah, he Michael Barry steals a motorcycle. I don't know. And he has a helmet on. I'm like, is this supposed to be funny or what? 
so Tevin Blair or Tevin Spurtis, I'll just say Tevin Blair because that's what he is in the credits. He goes off in this other guy. Tevin Blair beats him up, takes a knife. This other guy, this dumb guy, he sees a trap, but then he goes, na na na, you missed me. And because of his annoyance, a fucking boulder flattens him. And no, there's barely any gore. Like the one bit of gore is when this one girl gets her neck slit. That's it. The kills, the, the guy would be Mayor in Robocop 2. He gets pulled under a bus. Later on, you find him with a little hatchet in his head. Uh, one girl dies from a bear hug. Uh, one guy hits a trap and gets speared in the stomach. Ruby, she hits a trap where a body bumps her. She trips and falls on a rock, hits her head, and you don't even know she's dead until at the end. And it's like, oh, well, she's not back. I guess she's dead. That's how nonchalant the scene is. And you know, like, just because you get hit on the head when you trip on a rock doesn't mean you're dead. And nothing about that scene makes it seem as if she's dead. Nothing at all. Hell, Kevin Blair's character got in a net trap and got hit with a machete in the head. Granted, he had a helmet on. But then later on, he's got, you know, his head's bloody. Maybe because, you know, the, the helmet took the impact, but... Although it didn't go in the, the helmet, it kind of just bounced off it. But I guess maybe the, the force of it made him bleed. And the psychic lady, like, her psychic power sucked ass. Like, she you couldn't fucking save anybody with her powers that for some reason she has. I guess because they only have it in the movie so that when the killer chases her, she can actually not die. I, I guess that's the only reason. Other than that... Uh, Reaper chase the fuck fat ass. You know, Michael Behrman dies because uh, a, a crew member pushes the dog and pushes the fucking crew member in the film pushes the dog and the dog pushes him off the cliff. Again, Michael Behrman didn't even need to be in this film. He does nothing. Fuck a crew member has more screen time than some of these characters in that one scene. Kevin Blair gets to the girl and there's this trap and. Reaper talks and it sounds goofy as fuck. Reaper ain't gonna fall for the trick that Papa Joop did. No. You sound like fucking... What was his name? You sound like fucking Gomer Pyle. And then probably the, the, the I guess the best line is you know the, the trap doesn't work He's trying to get him closer at Kevin Blair. Yeah, the Reaper sucks. <laughs> There's the killer. The, the, the Kevin Blair goes, you the Reaper? The Reaper sucks. Yes, you have no fucking, you have no fucking idea. The Reaper does suck. You're right. You're right, Kevin Blair. The Reaper sucks ass. Fires around a bus. And even though the girl goes through the fire fine, and then Kevin Blair gets pulled on this rope, by this thing and he goes through the fire fine a uh, big badass reaper decides not to go through the fire and he gets in the bus that the fire's around and in the bus are the, the rocket the, the super fuel and the bus blows up I don't know why he didn't go through the fire but because the other two did but whatever then he's not dead he's going in the fire and then the blind girl gets out of the way and reaper falls down the pit Kevin Blair blind psychic girl and beast the dog they walk off and the movie ends I mean you just count the waves how this film's bad Harry Manfredini did the score and all he did was Friday the 13th music that's really what it is if you close your eyes this could easily be a Friday the 13th score I mean Harry Manfredini I guess he was just hired just do Friday the 13th and put it on a Hills of Ice movie. That's what the score is. The The Reaper 
is not intimidating. He's a big fat joke. The, the characters, you don't give a shit about them. Uh, the, the script is incredibly stupid. There's way too many flashbacks. The dog has a fucking flashback. A girl's psyched only when the plot's convenient. Uh, there's not much gore except for like a slit throat. So you're not going to get much for gore. Characters acting idiots. Nah, nah, you miss me. And then he gets flying by a rock 10 seconds later. What is this, a Looney Tunes cartoon? The one good guy, Bobby, at the beginning. It's like maybe he knew this movie would be shit. It'd be like, just be happy for the first scene. Give me my money. Goodbye. <laughs> the psychic lady, she could have used her psychic beams to call Bobby. She could... But yeah. This movie... It is one of Wes Craven's worst films. Is it his worst film? You can make the argument for it easily. I still hate my soul to take more because my soul to take had a bigger budget and I've never heard of interference so I don't know that movie has less excuse than this movie so yeah, my soul to take I just I absolutely hated I mean, fuck, even, I don't like Stream 4, but even Stream 4 is better than this movie. I like the first three streams, I reviewed all the stream films, but yeah, I don't like Stream 4, but even that's better than this piece of shit. This is easily one of West Craven's worst films, and, um, I mean, I like the Hills of Ice 2 remake, you know, sequel to the remake. I, I don't mind that film as a time waster. It's not great, <laughs> there's flaws, but I like it. I love the 2006 Hills of Ice remake. I'm surprised that, okay, instead of calling it Hills of Ice Part 2, why didn't they call it The Hills Still Have Eyes? Even in the title crawl, it ends with The Hills Still Have Eyes. Why didn't you call it that? I guess they really want to make sure it's a sequel, you know, Part 2, but. Again, The Hills Still Have Eyes would have worked. But yeah, I, I had nothing else to say. This movie is a piece of fucking dog shit. Dog flashback. Later.